your butt is it's nice and warm. Yeah. She looks at my fiance and she goes, is she not Korean? Hi, my name is Aurora and I am a recruiter. I have a series on LinkedIn and Instagram called Things They Don't Tell You About Korea. I started it after having relocated from New York to Korea. Let me tell you a little bit about myself because this is my first video and you guys don't know anything about me. I was born and raised in Queens, New York. I lived my entire life there in the same apartment. I haven't moved a single time and I loved New York. I never imagined myself living anywhere else. Um, I pretty much am really, I embrace the Queens girl in me. Um, but it's, it was all thanks to my parents who came here to give birth to their children. They lived their entire life in Korea. Um, and they came here to provide their children with the American dream. Whatever that is. They had nothing when they first came here. My dad had to find a job while searching the newspaper. Um, they started with speaking zero English. They had to learn all on their own. Um, but I think they did a good job because I'm here. I'm happy and healthy. And I really, really loved being a Korean American. I, I love both cultures. And, you know, we ate Korean food every day at home. We took our shoes off before entering the house. Um, but my parents spoke to me in Korean and I answered in English. There was a pretty good balance. And all of this changed last year when I got engaged to a wonderful man and I was offered this amazing opportunity for this great company. The only thing was this company is in Korea where I am now in Seoul. Um, this was probably one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life because again as I told you I lived my entire life in New York which means all my friends and family are in New York. I have nobody in Korea. No friends. No family. At all. And I'm not gonna lie there's so much pressure. Um, there are, there's a lot of pressure and all these different aspects of my life at the moment because I want to show my friends and family that I'm doing a good job here um, but at the same time, I'm adjusting to a new job, I'm adjusting to a new home, I'm adjusting to a new culture, um, and it's a lot. Ultimately, I came here for my career, and my job is to link all these people um, with jobs and then all these clients that I have, and I introduce you guys, and if it means relocating to a different country, that's my specialty, and if I can do it, then you can do it. So this itself is this journey that I'm doing um, also for my career. So it's a lot, but I, I'm pushing myself every single day. You know, before I um, decided that I wanted to film this, I watched a lot of um, Korean YouTube. When I say Korean YouTube, I mean like, I would search like, life in Korea. And the number one videos would always be like, teaching English in Korea, life in Korea, racism in Korea, living in Korea as a foreigner. Yeah. But there was no video for someone like me, who is Korean, I know, is American, but looks Korean. Yeah. So um, I wanted to call it the four emotional stages of relocation as a Korean American living in Korea who looks Korean but isn't Korean. Yes. Oh, so, okay, the first stage. I call it the wow stage and I call it the wow stage because the first two, three months when I came to Korea, everywhere I went, I was like, oh, wow, oh my gosh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, everything was great. Everyone was so nice. Everything was so fun. Oh my gosh, everything was open until like four o'clock in the morning. The nightlife here is amazing. Um, the food is amazing. Everything is amazing. It's everything is so cheap. The delivery culture here is unbelievable. I ordered something yesterday. It came to my house this morning. I opened the door to go to work, and it was in front of my my door. Yeah, 
and there are a lot of details in specific in different facilities just everywhere everywhere there's so much detail in which you can see that the country really shows their priority for the citizens and residents comfort and happiness so customer satisfaction is number one let me give you a couple of examples um, there are more examples on my instagram um, because they did a whole se- i'm doing a whole series on this during my stay here um, but one example is there are these bells like these bells that are like this size and they're embedded into the tables of restaurants and if you press the bell it's like a button if you press the button the waiter comes to your table yeah and they give you aprons when you enter a restaurant if you're wearing like a light colored shirt they'll give you an apron so you don't get food on your shirt um there are these rooms in cafes and restaurants that you can go into and close the door and you can smoke there so you don't have to go outside i mean i don't promote smoking but for those who do then there you go um and bus stop seats are heated in the winter yeah, so you're freezing cold waiting for the bus, but your your butt is it's nice and warm. Yeah, I mean the thoughtfulness in this country is just on another level, and I felt so appreciated as a resident here. And I was really proud to call my roots Korean, but that only lasted for about two three months because the second stage I'm gonna call it is it's I'm gonna call it the anger stage. And this stage, when you're in a relationship with this dude and the first three months or so everything that they do is so cute and they can make you so mad but you can forgive them because you're in this honeymoon phase right so that honeymoon phase it came and then it went and as soon as it went i was complaining about everything left and right what was i complaining about People in Korea, they don't hold the door for you. You know when you go inside, you, you open the door and you go inside and there's a person coming right behind you and you see that person, you're going to you're going to hold the door for them, right? No, not here. Not here. They go inside and the door closes right in front of your face. But at the same time, they don't expect you to hold the door for them. Yeah. Another thing. Someone will be like running across the street, across the street and they like bump into you, but they will never say sorry. And everyone here is so fast. Like when I say fast, I mean like, it's like, it's more than just New York fast. Um, Like you're at a convenience store, you need to pay for something, but the person behind you, they're going to be in like a rush. I don't know if they're going to be in a rush, but they just always happen to be in a rush. The person behind me and I have to be really fast and I feel so pressured all the time. So I told myself, um, I'm never going to lose this New Yorker in me. Because New Yorkers, they have this sense of like, they're fast, but at the same time, they take their time, you know? Um, They enjoy, they enjoy their day-to-day activity. I told myself, I'm always going to hold the door for people, and I'm always going to say sorry when I bump into somebody. I don't want to become like these people. And the biggest thing is if you look at me, I look very Korean. I always look like this. I don't have heavy makeup on. I don't have blonde or brunette hair and blue green eyes i look very korean i don't look like a foreigner here so that means nobody here assumes that i am american and that i may have a language called a language barrier and i don't understand truly the korean culture so a a comment episode comment episode will go something like this i go into a restaurant with my fiance we had dinner the other night it was a korean barbecue it was a korean barbecue place and for those of you who don't know um korean barbecue the waiter or the waitress they are at your table and they they cook the meat for you yeah um my fiance was telling me this korean folk tale that i had that i've i don't know about because i didn't grow up i didn't grow up here um and he was explaining to me and in, in korean and i was like answering a korean uh and then the waitress comes over to our table to flip our meat and she's like listening to our conversation and then she looks at my fiance and she goes is she not korean and i was like oh these people must all think like this 
they must all think like she looks completely Korean, but like why does she not know our culture? And people might just make assumptions that like I don't know, I'm either ignorant or uneducated or something. And you know, I don't know what why, but it really kind of like hurt me in a way. Yeah. It hurt my pride a little bit because uh there's no way of me explaining every single time I go somewhere like oh this is why I have an accent or oh this is why like I don't know what that word means yeah but people who look at me here they might not they don't they won't know just by looking at my outer appearance so I don't blame them so the third stage I call it the stage of denial and this is my current stage okay I have been living in Korea now for about five months. It has been it has been a very long journey adjusting to my new job and my new home. Um, like two months ago, I every time I come home, I before I open the door, I look and I'm like, "Am I ever gonna feel like I'm coming home?" <laughs> but now I'm so comfortable in my apartment. Um, I'm getting there. It's it's really it's really amazing how time can heal and how people adjust as time goes by. I am now at a point where I see myself changing, but I see myself changing into what I told myself I didn't want to change into. For example, I don't think I say sorry anymore when I bump into someone by accident. I still do, I still hold the door. Um, but like the crazy rush hour subway rides, they don't feel as long as any, as they once did. And it just means that I really finally started to adjust to this country. But to be honest, it's not that great of a feeling because I feel like I'm losing the New Yorker in me. And every day I'm just kind of like blaming myself for, um, oh, Aurora, why, did, why are you like this now? You told yourself you weren't going to be like this. But... Yeah, it does mean that I'm adapting. And I, I do feel like I am adapting quite quickly. But I anticipate that in my fourth stage, which I'm going to call it the acceptance stage, I'm like getting there. I assume that once that stage comes, I will have somewhat adjusted very well into this country. And my hope is that I will find a good balance between the two cultures. So my American in me and my Korean in me. I hope to find this like way of embracing both in this new country because I had a way of embracing both cultures when I was in New York. And I want to understand that, you know, I am still the same person I am here that I once was when I was in New York. Does that make sense? Like, I am no different. There are a lot of things that I do here that I never once did or... My personality, I feel like, changed a little bit, but I think I'm doing it on purpose because I have so much, like, greed to adjust quickly, but I want to understand that I don't have to do it so quickly. Like, I can take my time. No one's rushing me. Um, Because ultimately, you know, I lived, what, over 20 years in New York, almost 30 years in New York, and then I come here for the first time. How am I possibly supposed to, you know, change all of a sudden in 5 to, you know, 12 months, right? So yeah, those are my hopes, but planning this video, filming this video, thinking about the things that I'm going to say, it really brought a lot of peace of mind for me. I was able to reflect on the past few months that I've been here, and when I thought about it and I really like laid it out, I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh my goodness, Aurora, you came such a long way. Um... And there are so many funny episodes that I would love to share if you guys are willing to listen to. Um, there are a lot of funny things that happen because of my language barrier here. Um, I love to share. And this video, if I made it because there was no video like this out there on YouTube. And I know there are people like me living in a country um, trying to make adjustments to themselves. Um, and if you're going through something like I am, I really hope that this video was comforting. Um, just know that you guys are not alone. If I can do it, then you can do it too. 
I have so many more stories that I want to share with you guys. So if you guys are willing to listen to more, then leave a comment, um, subscribe, follow my Instagram for some interesting content. I will link it in the description box. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.